Okay, hola, hello. Uh, my name is Guille Polito. And she's, she's a Decusi. And we are here to tell you a bit how we learned small talk and a bit how we taught it uh, in many universities uh, here in Argentina. So it will be a strange talk. So. Okay, first we want to start to explain how do we uh, arrive to the class where the people start talking about the options. Just to talk a little about the background that we were having that time and the background that we see in our students. So, as you see, our background is like that font that is with a lot of lines, unnecessary lines, that is a lot of stuff that we have in our mind, and we have some something that it was complicated to, to clean just to, to see the real power of the objects. Especially we have a lot of uh, memory management, a lot of manual stuff, and especially we have a lot of problem just to, in the beginning we learned that to, to know how to program, we have to understand everything. Like, if I didn't know how something was made by the machine, for me it was very complicated to understand my program. So we had to have control of all our programs. That, uh, that happened uh, when we, we tried to make a guy to uh, program something. The guy had to actually know every detail, go into every function, and to know what it does because he doesn't, he didn't uh, trust that some function will work. So we didn't learn actually well how to modularize a program and to trust in in that. So. We had to have control on the programs. And, and we, when we had to learn how to program with objects, that's a bit uh, not true. Because actually, we want to trust that a, an object will do the job that we uh, we ask it. Yes, yeah, we have to like, make a hub of faith. So now, OK, I will say that message, and that will be OK. And that was, uh, it's hard to do that in the beginning. So after that, we learn C, Pascal, and that stuff. And we arrive to programming uh, paradigms. So in this, uh, we had a lecture where we learn uh, object-oriented uh, programming, logical programming, and functional programming. But the nice thing is that this uh, classroom was full of crazy people. So at first, we have these teachers, so imagine that you have a, a classroom and you are 15 students and you have these four guys, which actually looked yeah. a stranger <laughs> because uh, yeah. they had bears, they were nerdy, and they, that, and they, they were. The green one, he has a t shirt with size body and then he the Yeah, so it was an HTML. <laughs> so the, these guys were, were kind of crazy. But the thing is that every class, every lecture, more people arrived, so it, it, it was like a, a, a passenger. There were a lot of passengers in the class, uh, people that arrived and went and maybe uh, went into the classroom and made a comment, and then went they, they leave. So it was kind of strange. And the thing is that this keep growing with a lot of other people. So I am there, she is there, and Esteban also. So there, there's a lot of people. Uh, that participated in these classrooms, and it was fun. And this guy, the first thing they, they said was, OK, um, now that you learned all that that you learned before, you have to forget it. Because it doesn't, uh, for what we have to teach you, it doesn't actually uh, fit. Uh, it actually is not useful for you. Yeah, and when we are students, when the teacher says, you have to forget the previous class, you say, oh. Nice, I have already done it. So you learn how to make procedures, how to uh, write control structures, how to manage memory. OK, now the main character will be the object. So you will have objects, and the objects they will interact between them, and uh, you will have to send messages to them, and that's all. So you don't have to worry about anything else. So. The nice thing is that, OK, they said that. And the first thing they say, OK, uh, the first ex example they introduce in the class is, OK, we have an object that is Pepita. Pepita was a swallow, a, a little birdie, the little bird that flies. So um, 
We have Pepita de Swallow, which was our object of the first class in the, when we learn objects. And we have messages like Pepita fly some kilometers. So um, that was the first example that they introduced. So we will uh, show you how we did program that uh, at that time. Okay, the tool is a bit different. Um, if so we use something like this. Yes. So it's a, the, the thing is that at that time the, the guys sh they tell us, okay, download this, and you will program in this tool. This tool is uh, was not, of course, the actual Faro uh, with all the things that we use normally. So how do I change the? No, I want. Ooh. I want to mirror the, the screens. Like this? No. Okay, so I will code like this. <laughs> so, um, this is a reduced tool. We, uh, here, it, it's not the class browser that we know. But the guys told us, yes, actually, you when you program with objects, the main character is the object. So let's create an object. N no, let's create a class and a package and because if you do that, uh, you, w you want the test in here and the source in there. No. Let's create an object. So the tool is in Spanish because we taught here in Spanish. So we will create a new object. That's the, the main thing. So it asks us, uh, what is the name of the reference that will point to that object? So when you have an object, you only can reach it Okay, we have to put a name to that reference. We don't. Uh, that's the only way that you can handle an object by a reference. So we put a name, and since the name we want for our object is Pepita, we can have Pepita, and we can actually make, for example, we create a, an attribute for it that is the energy, and then we create the initialize. Yeah. Energy 100, okay? So the thing is that every time Pepita flies, she will lose energy, and every time that uh, she eats something, uh, she will gain energy. So we will actually write that. Uh, we will fly some kilometers, and uh, when we fly some kilometers, what we do is to lose some energy. So energy, uh, energy minus uh, why that? I don't know. It's an arbitrary mm -hmm. choice, but OK, every time that we fly some kilometers, we lose the twice of the energy. So we start programming objects by the object. So actually, this is the code that will, uh, these are the methods, the messages that an object, that our object, Pepita, will understand. So after that, we can just go, we, cre we create a workspace, and we can come here. Pepita is our object. And we can tell it, OK, uh, Pepita, initialize. Initialize. OK, so after that, we can let's put an accessor for ask what? it for its energy. But also, you can see it uh, by the reference. You have the name of the reference and the value pointed. So yes. if Here you want to see it fast, now you can see that something has changed. So uh, now I can ask it for the energy. Uh, uh, uh. So it's 100, and now I, can, I will make it fly 20 kilometers. Oh, I make it. I made it fly twice. So the energy should be uh, 20. Okay, I made it fly, fly twice. So this is the first tool that they introduced uh, for us. We the main thing where the objects and we send messages and we wrote the methods on the objects. Why? Because after, uh, after a while we learned that uh, the important thing is the object and introducing the class from the first step is not, uh, is a bit noisy for the guy that is actually learning f uh, for the first time and trying to understand what an object is. So let's go back to the slides. Okay. Perfect. <coughs> so, so after that, 
We have an object, you send messages, and then we start talking about polymorphism. We we obviously we are going we are doing on purpose. We are not talking about classes because for us the main pro, the main concepts are object message and the polymorphism. That for us is when the message uh, takes all the credits in the film, and all the time you see that that's the really 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 important feature here. So how can I show that uh, very easily? Yes, that's Made the force we do. So, uh, okay. Do, 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 do. No. Here. Okay, so second one here. Yes, imagine you already make Pepita, you already make it fly. Pepita loses energy, so now we have to increase the energy. How we do that? Okay, make Pepita eat. Pepita is Argentinian, so she eats beef chorizo and she eats some worms. And worms, yes. <laughs> When Pepita eats, uh, but that's a problem because Pepita is a, it's a bird. She cannot eat a uh, beef chorizo. It would be strange. Yes. And how we do that? We say, okay, Pepita, if you eat, you will increase your energy. But as yeah. we should say, sometimes Pepita cannot eat anything. We say, okay, but maybe it's not good for her health to eat beef chorizo. And how can we do that? Okay, we delegate. We use the, the, the magic of the polymorphism. So, first, let's have the code in here. Da, da, da. So, here, yes, what do we do? We, are, we want to say, uh, Pepita, eat. Uh, we will start with a worm. Uh, do we have the, yes, we can ask first Pepita for its energy to Yeah, see and we can see that, that it's 100. Ah, okay, we can see that it's 100 there. Uh, uh, here. Yeah, eat it. So we Go will eat a that. worm, and it's 105. Yeah, oh, this good that they. Uh, I actually didn't know that feature. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> okay, so now Evita has eaten, and she increased the energy. And if we say Pepita is beef chorizo. <coughs> so if we. What happens here? What happens? <coughs> I cannot eat meat, she says. Uh, and let's see how this is implemented. So we said Pepita the message eat, so let's see uh, the no. let's eat, eat. eat. Yes. Let's check the method. <coughs> when we say eat, we say something, that something we say the message. Check can be eaten by. We use that trick because we want to say that the meal, and we also here we start explaining. So you have to trust. In some cases, you have to to do that a little trick uh, about double, double dispatch and that kind of stuff. And yeah. all of this we can start in the first class. We don't have to wait. But but yes, uh, the nice one thing is that, for example, the beef chorizo actually gives a uh, if we yes, give because us if you see the, the code. After that line, we say that the energy is increasing, and beef chorizo understand energy. Yeah, so it gives energy the beef chorizo and the uh, worm energy. It gives us five, yes, as we, as we saw before. Yeah. But it doesn't work first. First, because uh, these guys actually change the implementation of how if they can be eaten or not. But the nice thing about polymorphism is that we can add another object. We, we can add the the, seed. the seeds. So we can give Pepita to eat seeds. And we can we created the object. Look, this object has no behavior at all. So what happens if we make Pepita eat the seeds? It says, an object doesn't understand the message check can be eaten by. Yes, of course. It doesn't understand the message. So. Uh, the program guides us to, okay, you ha in order to be eaten by our swallow pepita, you, are, you need to implement those kind of messages. So we will... Uh, yes, and the important step here is that you implement the two messages and now you are polymorphic. Someone. And in fact, yeah. all of this is our first class in the university. Yes. Uh, that doesn't understand this. 
Okay. So we change. Okay. So actually, this is the first like two hours of the class. So we are already teaching polymorphism objects and messages in the first um, in the first two hours and uh, with the less noise as possible. So. Um, the other thing is that, okay, uh, we first start with these two hours teaching this, and then we introduce a, a more complex example. This, uh, this example has three objects, but as, the soon, as soon as the class starts uh, advancing, we introduce examples with more objects, 10 objects, 15. So <coughs> um, there is something that we wanted and we implemented that is, okay, what if we want to see how, oh, okay, you don't look nice, uh, how those objects are related. So we have the feature here. And yeah, the resolution is killing us. Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, here we have the same example as before, but actually if you go to the diagram you can actually look at what is happening behind. Uh, not behind, actually it's like an inspector, but it's mu having multiple inspectors at the same time and showing also the identity of the objects. Because it's difficult to see the identity of the objects when uh, you only have inspectors. You have many inspectors, you cannot actually check if this object in this inspector is the same as this one unless you write a completely complex ex script. Yes, and something that, that with the uh, diagram gets uh, very clear is that the difference between the reference and the, and the object. Because you can have more arrows going to the same object, and that's very easy to show here. But when you are in the blackboard and you are writing, uh, some, the things start to get in missed, messy. So with that, you can check and you say, okay, that's what I was imagining. So let's say that I, w I am a student and I start writing my my program and I write these two objects, I, these three objects actually. The feature is here, so let's move it around. Hey, here, okay. Um, so, uh, we have these three objects and we want to start playing with them, but we are beginners, we uh, actually don't know much, so we will uh, start sending messages. So, we check if the worm answers the energy well, yes, it says it's five, and the Vifa Chorizo is also a hundred, yes. And then, we, ch we want to Pepita eat the worm. Yes, Pepita eat the worm, come on, you have to increase your energy. So. It sends me a message, hey, Neil does not understand the message, plus five. And I say, hey, what happened there? Because I actually wrote the initialized method in Pepita. Yes, look. I have the initialized method, and it's 100. So the energy should be 100, and uh, it doesn't work. So if we go to the diagram, we can actually check what is the bug we have. Because before, uh, if not, you have to inspect and Okay, try to understand what, what's happening there. Um, so we say, ah, Pepita's energy is nil. So actually, we have to initialize Pepita before. Uh, so we initialize Pepita. Uh, here we have the 100. Perfect. So now we probably can feed Pepita with the worm. Let's screw it. Okay, 105. Uh, so you can uh, kind of understand what's happening in the program having a this diagram, it's not the, the perfect tool, it's not the best one. Uh, it's a tool. You are invited to help, of course. Please to help. To enhance it. So. So here, what we get with this tool? The starting point, you start and you start programming. And that's, it's very important because you have feedback and you, when you program from the scratch, and in the first moment, you have more doubts, then you go to class and you understand better. I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens to me a lot of time. When I go to a class, I go, I sit down, I listen to the teacher, I say, oh, I understand everything. Then I go to my house, I say, I will do it. I don't have a where to start. <laughs> I say, oh, I don't understand anything. I have to go again and again. But with this, you can go, the first class, you do this. And it's very important because our background it's very procedural. It's very to if you do if you are not in charge of everything, everything will go wrong and that kind of stuff. And with this, we start from the first moment just to attack that problem. 
and you don't have to wait. So get dirty soon, put your hands in the computer, fail fast so you can learn and get feedback and practice more. Yes, that's very important. Get used to the environment. Because in the beginning, when you start and then you started to, to go in some alerts and some stack traits and some nasty stuff seen of programming, as soon as you are there and as gentle is that, uh, that part, I think that you will be a better programmer and you will be more happier. So let's code. Yes. So the question that you're probably asking is, hey, where are the classes? Yes. If, if I learn with this, where are the classes? What do I do with that? So be patient, because actually this tool is only uh, for learning during the first uh, month or the first three weeks during the, the course. So we try to focus on objects and messages and polymorphisms since the first day, so you can actually <coughs> really understand those three topics. And in fact, as you see, you have more flexible. Because even we were like handle errors before talking about classes, and that's not so common. And that uh, maybe uh, it's also like right now we have uh, more languages that they are not so classes based. And when, if you start with that, it's something like it gets a stick that uh, object oriented programming, uh, where is the class? No, that's not the main point. The object, the message, talk about the polymorphism, not about the class. So the thing is that this tool that we show you, we call it now Ozono. Before it was called Loop, and before it was called Object Browser. Uh, so with this tool, yes, we have problems sticking with, with names. Uh, uh, this, this tool uh, won the third prize in the Innovation Technology Awards in 2011 in ISO. Uh, it's implemented in Faro. Uh, you are invited to use it. Actually, we use it in many universities around Buenos Aires, but... Maybe you have suffered it. That's because of uh, closeness. Uh, and that's it. Okay. So this is kind of the last slide. So what is Osono finally? Uh, how we learn small talk? With a tool that makes focus on the, simple, uh, the simplest ideas and the most important ideas uh, we wanted to transmit to the students. We want to raise the complexity gradually, so we first start talking about objects, polymorphisms, uh, messages, collections, and then we introduce the classes and the method lookup and the inheritance. But we go from, the mo from those concepts that we think that are more the most important to the others that we think that, that are accessory to the actually the language or the... Yes, and in fact, it's like very easily when you use this tool just to the class where we explain what is a class in, in object oriented. It's like, okay, all of this, now it's here, now this is like a, a, an instance, and we explain a little bit how it changed the lookup method, but it's not very hard to say, oh, I have to do that, and it's not that they understand that as a recipe. I have to do that because, no, they, at least I think, that we understand what we are doing and where we are moving the code. And then we say, okay, a class is just another way to share some code, to put it all together. And, uh, and another thing that it's, uh, for us that we think that is very cool about this tool is the visual feedback that you have. You can see what is in the, in the, in the back. At least in the beginning, it's very, it's very good to, to learn. So uh, that's kind of it. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions. Any question? We no. can see the extended version. OK, so if there are no questions, I have three slides. Okay, I have, you have a question, yes. <laughs> uh, um, does it work in many? Small talk or just one? Just Faro so far, because it's mainly UI, uh, the, the UI so far is the most important. Uh, probably the core, uh, the core is actually the couple. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can port it anywhere, I think. Uh, as less uh, uh, as. To Shenstone. To Shenstone, probably, <laughs> yes. <laughs> if they have the same reflective API, yes, we can. So uh, then the UI is more complex because it's more uh, morphic based. But 
we can work on it. Any other question? Um, Wait. Here. <laughs> the slides will be uh, uploaded somewhere, I think. Uh, yes, it, it's MIT, open source. You, uh, you can take it, do whatever you want. Uh, if you can contribute, actually, we can actually wrote all in the same code base. That that would be better. But uh, no? yes, send, send us an email, or if you enter there, you have the configuration and how to download. In fact, if you are lazy, you have also prepared images. So yes. we have some uh, documentation. Also, mostly user uh, uh, user guides for the student. Uh, they're in Spanish because the students here uh, speak Spanish mostly. Uh, well, and the other thing that probably is interesting is that we are using it in four different universities in Buen around Buenos Aires. In the f uh, first, we started in the Universidad Tecnológica Nacional of Buenos Aires, and they moved to San Martín, Quilmes, and uh, Universidad Nacional del Oeste. Uh, so we are actually using it uh, in a lot of places. We are trying to enhance it. Uh, right now we have a project that is uh, in Universidad Nacional de San Martín to enhance it. Uh, we will see where uh, right, will right. it take us, but uh, it's moving. It's not that something that is uh, there and it's dead. Um, the other thing that probably if you don't have questions is we have in the tool <laughs> another mechanisms like for sharing behavior. If you don't have classes, how do you share behavior? Okay, this tool. Uh, has some kind of prototype-based uh, mechanism to share behavior between objects. So actually, an object has a prototype, and the prototype it shares behavior uh, with the prototype. Blah blah blah. Uh, emphasis on object references, and there are some utilities for teachers, like uh, exporting the all the state of the uh, of the lesson of the project to, uh, for teachers, so we can actually. Uh, yes, in fact, the, the, students work. the tool is very open. We don't show this, but we have another part where you can put your tests, and right. in some places they also have like an exercise, like make this work, make all these tests go green, and something like that. So if you want to play with the tool, you can. Okay, so that's it. That's it. Coffee break. <laughs>